I was just reflecting over this scripture verse from Habakkuk 1.5, where it says, look among the nation and see what I am doing and be utterly amazed because I'm doing something in your days. You wouldn't believe it if you were told. Hello, hello, everyone. This is Leif and that scripture verse has just been burning in me as in the last week, week and a half, we've had the honor of having Yazir Anaki visiting us here at the Globe Mission Awareness in Atlanta, as well as yesterday we were with a Renew World Outreach, who's providing so much technology and hearing about the stories about, did you know that the reality is going to be that by 2033, that scriptures will be presented to every ethnic group, every nation, every tongue, tribe, and language, the word of God in some form so that people would have access to the word of God, so that everybody will hear the gospel. And according to Matthew 24, 14, the Bible says, and then the end will come. When this gospel of the kingdom, and part of that were GMA, and I just wanted to give a little of the background part of this conversation that we're going to have today, because I've received some questions, as many of you maybe have been watching, we start to talk about the lighthouse of love. And if you've been part of the GMA family or tribe for a long period of time, you maybe remember we talked about that uh, quite a few years earlier. So today I'm going to help to simplify and clarify and purify the message so that we all together can multiply what a lighthouse of love is. So that every single time you hear some talking about it, that you can see it very clearly. Uh, so I wanted just to start a little bit of the story and the background. There was two stories. One of them is almost about 20 years ago in the country of Cuba, when things was a little bit more difficult and hard. It is a challenge right now, but back then uh, they were keeping an eye on you. And I remember one night they had put me in the trunk of a car, trying to get me out of these uh, back alleys, take me out of Havana and into this uh, area where I wouldn't know because I was in the back of a car. Until we came out on the field, they open up and it's totally darkness. And you're in the middle of nowhere after an hour and a half, two hour drive or so. And then suddenly this generator went on. I heard the sound and this light came on. And there is all these people that is gathering in. And I realized there's been so much fear around these people. And then the light came in. And in a matter of a moment, we brought Jesus. And I remember it was this lady who was dancing with me, who was a paraplegic. She got up on the wheelchair. These miracles started to take place, shared the gospel. And so many people surrender to Jesus. Later on, we went to a small little town where we we're going to have some coffee with Cuban coffee with some friends. And again, they had all this fear because in every neighborhood there was an informant, somebody that talked, and they were afraid of fear. And I just realized we need a lighthouse of love. If there's an every street corner, there's somebody represented darkness and fear. Why don't we have somebody that can represent light and represent love? So I got that a little idea. And later on in Multan, Pakistan, this thing continued to burn because again, I just realized the believers were so crippled by fear. And it's almost like, oh, there is that terrorist Saul, here he comes because they have not yet seen the Apostle Paul. And I thought about, wow, we need to have something when it's easy for, because I met Muslims that just wanted more and more of Jesus, but I didn't know which church to send them because all these churches, they were afraid. They were living in fear. And there's a reason for it. Many of them being persecuted. It's been difficult and hard. So it's not to point the finger. But then I remember me as a kid growing up in Norway. And some of you were maybe not aware, but from our house in Norway, we saw the North Sea. And I remember so many times uh, my memory is of the storms because the North Sea is right in the front of us. Not one single house between us and the North Sea, 100 yards away. And as I saw those ships right on the corner, there was always a lighthouse. So I knew even if the storms was tough and it was dark out there, this lighthouse gave them a clarity. When you do not know what to do, you need to know where to go. So this was a connection of something I grew up with as a child. Then suddenly I realized in the storms of life and some of the countries where so many different people are experiencing and they feel they are drowning in what is taking place. What would it look like if we have a lighthouse of love and in every neighborhood, when people don't know what to do, they know where to go to experiencing the very love of the Father. So this was kind of the starting part. And let me give a little of the background then. And we did start 
a year afterwards, the lighthouses are loved, both in Cuba and in the Middle East. And we grew and it was exploding and it was amazing. And, and we invested in it. We sold into it, sacrificed into it. And at the height of this, we had, I think, about 2005, 2006, we had about 17, 1800 lighthouses of love. It was amazing. And I still remember the day when I realized that that we have been asking God to bless what we were doing instead of do what God was blessing. And it almost ended up more like a babble. We were multiplying, but we didn't know enough about it. It was more orphans producing orphans, and it was not pleasing to the Father. And I remember the day when you almost realized you had been helping God, and you had ended up with an Ishmael, and now I realized I had to let it go. And it was so difficult because we had some in Africa too, but some of our leadership, I just went in and said, we cannot sustain this. We cannot continue because we had defeat and burped, and it was almost like there was a death on the vision. So I just laid it down. It's like some of you know my rod message. I laid down my rod because it didn't belong to me. Everything that we have belonged to him. But something in me also died because I, I had thought this was God. It was a God idea, but I didn't realize that some of me and some of us was mixed into it. And God wanted to do something that only he can do. And he was left with the glory. So this started a process and I had laid this aside. But just recently, last couple of years, as I've been on a pursuit and pursuing him and dreaming again, it was the first trip in Brazil. This thing came up again with me. I was with Heidi Baker and Randy Clark. And as we were there with Abe Huber doing a leadership event, and in that atmosphere of the glory, I just felt again this word about the lighthouses of love. And I felt this thought came, one million lighthouses of love for the one billion sons and daughters harvest. And it just hit me, but I just kind of uh, let go of that. And later on in October, at the voice of the apostle Brazil, it was again, the presence was there, the glory was there, and it came again. And it was right after the pastor Carlitos of the biggest Baptist church. He had just been shared and spoken. And it was not so much what he spoke and he shared. It was just the presence came in. And again, I felt that word and I realized it was God. And it's almost like you lay down your dream and now God was resurrecting something that you laid down. And he said, I, I want you to join me. What I'm about to do is raising up. A million lighthouses of love for the one billion sons and daughters harvest. I want you to create an embassy that will represent that will represent me well, where people will know. They will know the message of the gospel. They will know the language of the gospel. They will understand in the culture, but I also know how to translate in the culture what I place them to be. And these things started to stir in me. So make that story short. I laid on that floor, just wept and just place myself in the offering plate, just like in Isaiah 6, and just said, here am I, send me. If you can use me, God, but I don't want to. I don't want to go in and make something or make anything work. So we went to Cuba not long after that. And in Cuba, as we were there, we're just sharing that because our family in Cuba always asked, hey, what is, what is the new thing? And what is God doing? And what is God saying? And I was just sharing with them this strange thing because they knew about what had happened in Cuba. And they also maintained a couple of lighthouses from the old system. And then suddenly I just started to share. I, I have this thing and started to describe a little bit. But it was still uh, because it was not clear about what God wanted and what God was saying. I had my vision, but I had laid that aside and said, God, you have a dream. And I need to have a vision for your dream in regard to this. And when I shared the story, they just took that to heart. Some Thing was important. I didn't know it. And then it started to grow and it started to explode. And I started to hear story and testimony. And before we knew, just in the last about six months, 107 of these lighthouses, love has come up. And so I was just like blown away. And we've just had the last couple of weeks just trying to provide more clarity of language. What is the newness? Because God said, I'm doing something new. That means it has not been done before. So we cannot go in the past trying to figure out what we did or what was working because what God is about to set up is new. But hearing the stories from Cuba, 
hearing the testimony, what they've done intuitive, we feel we can do intentional without controlling it because this is a movement. And it is not just a movement part of our movement, but also something that now other movements is taking care of because it is working. It is the kingdom and it is family and it is explosive and it has a Jesus virus and it is contagious and people all over from a moment like uh, the story of Lee that for two years that Aki just went to the home of Lee who was a key witch in her area and now she is a worshiper. She is probably the top evangelist that we have and she has eight lighthouses of love just to her movement. So we see just a short period of time how people are capturing this and then they're opening up their home, opening up. Some even have a park when they don't have a home to meet in or in the school system and government building. It is explosive. So I just wanted you to be aware of a little bit of the history, a little bit of the background so that you can get a picture. So that's a little bit of the history and a little bit of the background. And the next thing that we are seeing is we do want to move this in. So I'm bringing about 500 leaders to Islamabad in Pakistan. And we're going to now to share the vision and the dream there. Second thing that what we're going to do now from that very place, bring it into Afghanistan, into Kashmir, then into Bangladesh, then into Indonesia, into Sri Lanka, and spread it into a kingdom family movement as another mission or communal groups so that everybody can use this simple tool and to be able to be part of what God is doing. So I just wanted you to know about this and being aware. The second of all, also I wanted to share a couple of things just to be able to help us and to dream. I want you to dream with me in this season. Yesterday, we were at Renew World Outreach. And for the last seven, eight years, they've become good partners with GMA. It is so excited to see these young, dynamic leaders using their creativity. It's almost you're going to the Silicon Valley, uh, only this is a kingdom Silicon Valley. They took over the old Wycliffe Bible Translator headquarter up in Woodstock, Georgia. And in that place, this group of young people are coming together and they are creating technology that is actually making it so easy for so many of us to be able to fulfill the Great Commission. So they just sat around the table and started to ask us some questions. And Yazir and Aki and Mike and, and David and myself, we were sitting around the table. And as they were asking questions, they came in and they just shared some of the tools that is available for us to take the gospel. First of all, we did that with the purpose of Cuba and the Lighthouses of Love in Cuba so that we can accelerate this now from about 107 groups to 1,000 groups very quickly by utilizing also technology, but also how we can share New Testament, even the old people to have listening groups or even movies to be able to show it around in different places because there's very few, few places they move in theater. And we can do wholesome Jesus movie where people have encounters, altar call, invite them into movie, now into the lighthouses of love in that area. So it's just all this technology and tools that is available. And the majority of the nation doesn't have Wi-Fi. And here we have an opportunity to a device they've created, to place that device into the lighthouse of love. And we take the very master class and all the material that we didn't realize we have put this material together to help people out of chair two into chair one to discover their identity and then out of their identity intimacy then everything jesus paid for inheritance and helping people to fulfill their destiny the thing that is excited about this for me i was just thinking about the apostle paul that when he started a mission journey of a church that actually turned the world upside down, a church that by the time you got to Acts chapter 19, verse 10, uh, uh, that everyone in Asia had heard his good news. Wow, if that could happen such a short time without technology, without transportation, without anything else, how can we learn from the Apostle Paul of some of the strategy, some of the way the Spirit was operating, full of love, power, and wisdom? And as I started to look into that model, I realized there was something that was very different than we do because sometimes what we try to do is we go to school for three years and we try to train people and sometimes maybe overtrain them. But what we are seeing now, and I'm learning from Cuba that in five to six months, that some of these people just meet Jesus. They're so excited and contagious. They start to be disciple. But we do not wait 
until, and Jesus didn't do that. It, it was not almost like that. The people are coming to him and they had to be finished to come to him. Now they came to him and in the process of being together with him, they got transformed. So we just realized, and that was a little bit different model with the lighthouses, that somebody just gets saved and transformed and healed. Like one lady who had two strokes and had cancer, she got healed. And as a result of the encounter she had with Jesus, that very day she said, this Jesus, I want my people to know about that. And she opened up her home, same day. So when Paul was in Philippi, within a week, Paul, in Philippi, this is a place where the gospel had not been before. He established a church. He established leadership. He left there. And I don't even know if he was able to go back again there, but it was a church that he later on wrote a letter that we are familiar with today. And we have the Philippians. But this church was actually thriving well. Thessalonica. So it was not almost like we have an opportunity to raise up church planters for the next three, four years and pouring into them. If we are going to get the harvest, we need to do it. And we have to learn from people like the Apostle Paul. We need to learn the Jesus way. We need to learn to get people as soon as they meet Jesus to say, just follow me and let me show you the way. That's what they did. And then they, in a journey, the next three years, they were with Jesus. They got so changed and transformed with the one they were with. And that's who they became like. And then Jesus sent them out, not when they were perfected and finished, but while I was in a process together with him. So I just wanted to share that. That's a little bit of also what is taking place in the lighthouse of love. And if I were to take you, if that's into Pakistan or if that's anywhere, and my pitch of this is as a Norwegian, I have been to the Norwegian embassy in many different countries of the world. Some of those countries is very difficult. When I have my Norwegian passport, if I go up to Washington, D.C., I can walk right into the Norwegian embassy. We actually have consulates here in Atlanta. I don't know if they have it any longer, but they used to have. So with a Norwegian passport, when I came there, soon as I enter into that door, it's a little bit of Norway in the middle of Washington, D.C., or a little bit of Norway in when I was in Atlanta or other cities where they have a consulate that represents the embassy. In that place, I could have Norwegian food. I could speak the Norwegian language. I could actually experience a little bit of the Norwegian culture. And as a result of that experience, a little bit of my homeland, wherever I am at in the world. This is a little bit also the prototype for what a lighthouse of love is. Uh, so for a lot of people, they do not realizing that they have not even tasted a little bit of heaven on earth. But what a lighthouse is of love, it's almost like an embassy. And there is love ambassador. Ambassadors love that represents the king in that neighborhood or in that school or in that business or in that park or in that government. And they're creating an environment. First of all, they do know who the king is. They are an apostolic people. And the word apostolic just means they are sent out. The king has sent them and he has anointed them as ambassadors. So the ones that is running these, they are people that we are sending, representing the king. And as they're getting to know the king, they're learning to know about the language of the king, the culture of the king, and of his kingdom. They're learning the people when, doesn't matter if you're in Pakistan, if I take you to Kabul, if I take you to Jakarta, Indonesia, I take you to Havana, there's something of the kingdom of heaven on earth that you get to taste of. There's something about this language that is different. It's called the language of love, which is the language the blind eyes can see and the deaf ears can hear. So imagine you, I take you on a trip around the world and you meet some of these lighthouses of love. They will look very different if this is to touch some of the affluent Muslim leaders that we're meeting in Karachi, that will look very differently than if I take you to Varadero in Cuba. Each place will have a different flavor, but there's something that is in common. And there's something here that you will recognize when you're coming into it. Just like I do with a Norwegian embassy, wherever I go in the world, there's something in Norway that I get to do when I have the passport. This is part of it. We want to make it easy for neighbors that are coming in. And there's a couple of practical things. Yes, this is a discipleship process. People are growing. They're coming in. They're meeting Jesus. And then they start the simple process. And that is they are in the next moment as they're getting to know Jesus. They are growing to become like Jesus. And then they're going to share Jesus. So it's a simple up, in, and out process. But in that simple discipleship process, we do have some lessons they can use, but they also have freedom. There's times the spirit just moves. Times we just show a video. It maybe it's different from place to place, but we have some of the core values. That's what keeps it. 
together. It is the culture that is going to sustain that. And the culture is a culture of heaven that is going to be represented wherever you go in the world. There's a language that you will see is common. And the primary is the language of love. There is a couple of basic things that you will see with any one of them. And that is taken from Luke chapter 10, where they bless people. They are people that has been blessed that would be a blessing to their neighborhoods. Not going around speaking curses or hair is dark or anything else. It's a different way of operating. And that's taken out of Luke chapter 10. He said, when I send you out, I want you to go to those people, find a man of peace. So we're finding a man of peace in that neighborhood, in the school system, wherever people are. And then we start to bless that neighbor. Then the Bible, you have fellowship with them. You eat with them. You're connecting with them. You're finding out and getting to know the people. Hey, let me invite you over for a meal. The lighthouses of love, they will be a blessing, but they will also build community and connect with the neighbors and care about the neighbor. It doesn't matter if they are Hindu or Buddhist or Muslim or whatever they are, because you know your language, but you're also learning about their language. And we're going to learn more about the covert revival that's connected to this too. So sometimes it is overt, other times it is covert, depending where the lighthouse. The third thing that Jesus said, I want you to do is to heal the sick. Meet their needs. You maybe have a word of knowledge. You maybe, but if there's a certain issue, what are you struggling with? How can I help you? How can I add value? You heal the sick, helping people to meet their need, and then sharing the gospel who you represent. When they got to see the gospel in you and they get a curiosity because you have blessed them, because you're now connected, you want their trust, you have met some of their needs, and that's also their physical need. We will bless them with physical food, spiritual food, whatever the people needs there, so they can experience and taste and see how good God is. And then the last part of that, now you have an opportunity to explain about this beautiful king who loves them so much, and he wants them to go from orphans to become beloved sons, and that there's a lighthouse in their neighborhood. And if there's not one, maybe their house will be the next lighthouse that we can plant so they and their friends, they can bring them in to be able to meet a God that looks just like Jesus. So for some of you that have had those questions, I hope that was helpful. I'm going to go in and just explain also for some of you with GMA, because many of you that are partners are giving, helping you also to see a little bit of the focus that we are doing in regard to that. So why that right now? We have LMOP, Loving Muslim on Purpose, and etc. This is just something that we believe that God has given us as a tool. It's, it's more than a tool, but it is actually a way where we now have an opportunity to reach the unreached and throughout the 1040 window, finally turn on the light. In the places where there's fear and darkness, we have an opportunity right now to be able to plant these embassies, these lighthouses of love. There are storms going on all over the world. And so when people don't know what to do, they need, they, they do know where to go. And what I do want to do in this season, including Cuba, we're just going to double again this year. We double now since then, but I realized, wow, God is already doing. God is already blessing. There's revival fire. You're probably the most difficult time in Cuba, but in the middle of that, we're going to invest in love. We're going to make sure that this is not for every lighthouse that have the support. But what I am encouraging, I'm going to raise up thousands of people that would be willing to give a hundred dollars a month or some ten. And there's other people maybe you're doing a thousand, but people that are coming in and saying, Hey, I want to be part of that. And then just I was just thinking about one of you who's out there that has been faithful. And I know exactly who you are, that put that one hundred dollar check each month. And when we open up that Monday and we see there is that check again, that is that Lee that you are supporting that has eight lighthouses of love. And they told me earlier today, she led over 100 people to Jesus. Imagine 100 people that have lived in darkness that Jesus has opened up their eyes so they can see because that you were part of it. I want to make sure that you get to invest in love and you have an opportunity to be part of it. Uh, I have been so blessed. You have been so blessed with the purpose that we get to be a blessing. And I'm a giver. I love to give just like God is a giver. This is not an appeal for us to give. This is an opportunity for us to invest and to invest in love. So as you're starting to see this now, if you're not already a partner, I want just to challenge you just to pray into this and see if this is something the Holy Spirit wants you to be part of. I want you at least to know what it is. I want you to know what God is doing. 
And you will see in the next six months, you will get more and more clarity as you're seeing the testimony, hearing about the stories. But it's also, we're going to continue to provide a language. Everything is not clear yet, but what we see very clearly is what God is doing and what God is working. And the biggest thing we're trying to do is staying away from it this time and not mixing our own thing into it. And just we want to get in on what God is doing and what God is blessing and then investing into that. So we do have the people, they're on the front line. We have people now in areas that are willing to give up what they have to be able to run the lighthouses of love into community where there is not churches and there's not Jesus. And we are now bringing that also into the Middle East. And you and I have an opportunity to be part of it. And that excites me. And it should excite you. So let's spread this Jesus virus and let's do that through community. Let's do that in every neighborhood and what? Would this look like? Imagine a million of these lighthouses of love with the stories that you have heard. This is a life dream of mine. This is part of my legacy, and maybe it is part of your legacy. This is an eternal investment plan, and there is an incredible reward for whoever God leads to be part of it, because it needs to be led by the Spirit, because the lighthouses of love movement is a Spirit-led movement. So, Father, I just thank you so much for touching the nations with your love. Thank you so much that we get the privilege to be the generation that can see the unfinished task being finished. Thank you, Jesus, that we get to be an answer to your prayer. Thank you that there is going to be worship from every nation, tongue, tribe, and language. And as a result of that, we know they're going to meet you, Jesus. I thank you for the idea of the lighthouses of love, that it came from you and it's going to go through you and back to you. And I thank you for every faithful investor that is part of this. I thank you for the frontline workers that is part of that, the people that are giving their life for this thing. I thank you, Father, for the intercessors that is praying into this. I thank you that this is a movement in the earlier stages that we have no clue where it is going to go, but we just want to be part of it. And we're staying away from any area that is not you. And we don't want to ask you to bless what we are doing. We want to do what you are blessing. And I thank you for the testimonies in Cuba right now. That, uh, wow, that it is actually uh, changing neighborhoods, changing lives. And I thank you that that fire that is burning now in Havana is going to spread all over that island in the next 18 months. And I thank you that it's also going to spread throughout the Middle East, including coming back to America. Thank you that I heard about Lighthouses of Love in Mississippi being established because they have seen the power of love. So I bless you to be an ambassador of love, to learning the language of the king, understanding the culture that he has placed you in. And as a result of that, for you, both in the marketplace and education, wherever God has placed you, for you to represent the king well. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.